I'm Dr. Craig Polvin, here to talk about neuromotor function, which is the brain's coordination of muscle movements, particularly voluntary movement. This coordination depends on signals going in two directions. The brain sends signals to muscles directing motions, and nerves in the muscles send signals back to the brain, providing feedback about the movements. Muscle movements are categorized by size of motion and are depicted in this diagram. Gross motor function relates to the control of large muscles and movements, like for throwing, catching, hitting, and kicking, as well as multifaceted actions for sports and dance. Athletics and other physical activities can be important self-esteem boosters for students with learning problems. And on the other hand, students who are physically awkward or who struggle athletically often feel embarrassed or even humiliated in front of peers. So gross motor function is integral to a student's school experience, even if it is not as apparent in classroom activities and work. Fine motor function relates to the control of hand movements and manual dexterity, such as using tools like scissors, tying shoelaces, playing a musical instrument, and keyboarding. Smooth coordination of fine motor function, including for typing, requires being aware of finger positioning without visual information or feeling where your fingers are when looking elsewhere. That's where those bi-directional signals come in. Finally, graphomotor function is the coordination of hand movements specifically for maneuvering a writing utensil. Obviously, graphomotor function is huge for schoolwork, given how much output is handwritten. Many students really have a hard time making the pencil do what they want it to do. Instead of using a conventional tripod grip, they might hold the pencil in unusual ways, which can result in hand fatigue. Their fingers and hands might not send strong feedback signals to the brain, so they may have to compensate by pressing really hard on the paper. They might not form letters in correct ways, resulting in legibility problems. Many students with graphomotor difficulty are faced with a legibility efficiency trade-off. The only way they can form readable handwriting is to go very slowly. Weak graphomotor function usually leads to what I call the funnel effect. A student may have perfectly good expressive language, meaning that when speaking, he can communicate very well. But all that oral expression gets compressed when the student has to put pencil to paper. So if you were to compare a transcript of what the student can say to what the student writes, it's like they came from different students. This can be enormously frustrating for the kid, who has so much more knowledge and thinking to share than he can efficiently or clearly get on paper. You can also think of a graphomotor problem in terms of our computer metaphor. The student's mental microprocessor and hard drive are in good shape, but the computer has unreliable connectivity, making printing an iffy proposition. Again, that can be very frustrating. Neuromotor function has other forms too. Or a motor function refers to the control of musculature for speech and enunciation. So neuromotor function is important for school in many ways. Fortunately, much can be done to support students with gross, fine, or graphomotor dysfunction, either in terms of remediation or bypassing the difficulty. I'll see you next time.